Hello, Proxy Table Gaming fans. BTG, Lucky Sixes with Hyper G. Yellow. I don't know if that will confuse people because I waited for you to speak after saying Hyper G rather than Lucky Sixes, but the names are correct on the screen. They're Those a clever bunch. Sixes. They'll work they it are. out. They will. Whether they've already worked it out or they need a few more minutes, they can do that. But yes, <laughs> we are here for another battle report. We are. I mean, the momentum is high already, isn't it? You know, we're round four mm. now, Art of War. Yeah, getting to the and, crux of um, things. This is the, uh, yeah, the, the bottom of the fourth in terms of our battle reports. Um, and, <laughs> yeah. Bottom isn't a far description that's mm. necessary, really. Yes. I haven't had a good day um, one, have I? <laughs> no. So you're looking to bounce back. And what better way to bounce back and take the pressure off than against the opponent that you are today? Uh, I'll tell you what, my opponent is Andy, Andy Barton. And uh, the minute you draw... Have you played Andy? I don't think you have, have you? I haven't even played him. Well, we've spent you have, you've never played chatting. Andy? I've never played him again. Yeah. Superb guy. I mean, you mm. know, and, a, and a great player to play against. Just fun, describes Andy. In, in, and positivity and, you know, friendliness. Uh, can't, can't credit the guy enough. He's such a good fun yeah. Time on the but scene. I don't need um, to have played him to know all that because he's no, won no, you don't. countless of uh, sportsmanship, sportsmanship and, awards, and player and, of the year, you know, yeah, player yeah, of the year, absolutely, <laughs> sure, yeah, player of the not? year. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Yeah, let's nominate him right now. <laughs> but yes, um, um, my orcs and goblins listio. You've seen it in three battles, of which I've achieved fourteen out of sixty points. Mm. Oops, <laughs> op what? <laughs> Yeah, OP Orcs, I don't think so. Proving yeah. you're wrong, Ali. <laughs> well, no, to be fair, it wasn't Ali that was saying they're OP. It was just Ali winning with them. Um, but yes, um, yeah, I mean, um, the Orc Warlord, what's his name? Gromgor. Grom he, he's not, not led his boys to a fantastic day one, um, no. but he will hopefully do a lot better in day two. Uh, I'm not going to go through this list because we have seen it in the previous three battles, but yeah, check it out. Lots of Orcs and some Trolls as well. But this is Andy's list, and mm. I love love the way Andy gives names to all his characters and everything. There's there's a lot of fluffiness going on in, in the list. Um, love that, um, and I think it's it's great that you've included that on this uh, screenshot. Like he says, so well done. I know Andy will be pleased by that as well. Oh, very he much does so. It's, call... it's, it's certainly a delight when you see in the uh, all the lists and things, and it gives something fresh as well. And and you know as well, it, it uh, it's kind of like a bit of a like trailer spoiler thing. For like what yeah. his army is going to look like as well, which is very cool. Obviously, yeah. uh, from my point of view, love that he's playing vampires. Love that he's got a dragon and he's got Donny Art coach. But it's not Donny; it's the casting. <laughs> yeah, I know. Which is another fantastic play on words. Absolutely. Yeah, it... uh, but it is the vegan vampire army. Apparently, the fasting and the furious. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> I mean, hopefully they don't fancy the taste of orc blood. You know, in this one. Well, that's um, it. Yeah. Uh, Vlad Impaler leading the way. Um, and yeah, he, he is on a zombie dragon, like you said. Now, now I'm sure there are many, many more puns in within this thing for first. That I won't like, pronounce correctly or get. But well, I'm yeah, not clever I, enough. I've not seen a single Fast and the Furious film. I feel like it's, it's. I know, I know. And I'm going to get absolutely <laughs> scoured for it. I know. I, I, there's like now. 20, isn't there? Um, Twenty last year, mm. yeah. So yeah, <laughs> but uh, Fair I, so I don't know how I've done it, but I've I've missed it completely. But uh, yeah, I, I, I can still appreciate the names here. Definitely, yeah. Uh, he's got all the all the good stuff, you know. He's a killy vampire on top of a zombie dragon, you know. Nothing to need much more saying. I mean, you love Crimson Rage, don't you? On one of your covers, I do, I do. Um, so it's a good little thing. Um, he's got Nos Feratu. Nice. Um, who is a another vampire count? So the double vampire count, which I again you're you're a fan of. Uh, mm -hmm. This one's on a monstrous revenant. Uh, I don't have a clue what that does. Um, great monstrous revenant. It must be good because it's come into seven hundred ninety-five points. Is what I was thinking. Um, again, very killy. Um, um, but that's all for characters, which means he is a little light on magic. I mean, a vampire army, uh, really. He's just got the Adept and the Apprentice, um, so it's, it's not that many spells. Um, you're looking to see spells? if there's any more hidden anywhere. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think so. Because even the Spectral Hunters aren't. Hidden oh, yeah, yeah. Nope, no champion on there. Hmm. Yeah. Nice. Uh, in Lore, he's got the 
three lots of 35 skeletons, each with Legion standard halberds, etc. A nice little core setup for the for the fluff as much as the skeleton horde. Uh, bat swarms, brilliant. Best chaff, best chaff in the game. <laughs> Nearly. I think it was in my list. <laughs> it was in your top three. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you'll disapprove of top, my top three. Uh, Dark Coach, aka okay, Cast Iron, absolutely brilliant. Uh, I appreciate the extended chassis on there as well, yeah. which I know you have to play because you've got the model mm-hmm. on, on an extended base. Uh, Ten Baronites, well, we know how good they are because you're playing the Death Star of them. Um, obviously, they don't have the characters with them um, yeah. because the characters are mounted here. But uh, there is that. But interestingly, they don't have a musician. I don't know how that's panned out, but yeah. <laughs> it makes care. me think of what happened in the battle whether they needed one care. or not yeah. Yeah. Uh, 10 spectral hunters which are obviously very good with the, when their 3 up age just works for them and a shrieking horror the Batmobile nice mm, <laughs> That's good. yeah excellent yeah so looking forward to this one let's uh, see what happens and this is indeed counter thrust and secure target with an asterisk uh, because we didn't know which secure target each of us was going for um, basically yeah four tokens and um, secretly choose one at the end of game five we um, work out which ones we're each going for and let's see how it pans out um a recipe for disaster it was mm. yeah so uh, i spread out andy spread out it was the full bell full bell nice. for this one um so the tokens you can see that the two that I placed were the gold coins. The two that Andy placed were the red markers. Um, three of them probably slightly more on this right side of the battlefield as I'm looking at it, uh, with one on the left. Uh, for deployment, unusually, I've got my big block of ferals out on one flank, which I don't normally do. I usually have them front and centre running through stuff. Mm. Uh, but for this one, I decided I was going to put them on the left flank. I can't really remember who dropped for whatnot. Um, I think I dropped for first. You at first. You at first. Oh, cool. Thank you. You've seen the picture. I mm-hmm. thought it, I thought it was probably that. Um, and I've also got some trolls. I've got the Iron Orc chariot um, and the Goblin chariots on that side of the battlefield. Um, my idea really was to. I think I had dropped for first. I didn't know that the Baronites were going to be there when I put the ferals there. Um, but my idea was to basically just um, either go for the objective and tell him if he wants to fight through ferals, he can. Um, by which point I'll have stuff to counter charge and finish off to anything that's scoring to stop them getting the objective, if that is the objective. Or I'll just bash through and not worry about keeping that objective because I wasn't going to choose it. Mm. <laughs> um, yeah, I've got my veteran orcs in the middle um, with the shaman. Uh, then I've got two wrecking teams either side of my veteran orc marauders uh, with uh, Gromgor. I always have to pause and remember what the real one was called, Grimgor, before I remember mm, Pines yeah, Gromgor. Yeah. Uh, and then I got the Feral Lock Marauders on the hill being propped up by my painkillers. <laughs> other I was other on lands weekend. of proteins are available. Uh, indeed, yeah. Um, and then I've got the neophytes uh, ready to ambush at some point. Uh, going right around the corner, I'm over to uh, some cool unit fillers going on in uh, mm. Andy's Skeletons. Uh, so that first unit is block of skeletons. I think they're are they eight wide or seven wide. I can't tell at the moment, but they're pretty wide. Seven. <laughs> not going with the bus formation idea on, on them. Yeah. Um, then he's got the monstrous revenant uh, Nosferatu. Uh, then he's got Vlad Impaler on the dragon. Again, nice use of the vampiric terrain, which I think is in abundance in available, but using it is something else. And Andy's done a superb job with his army. Uh, you've got a unit of skeletons hiding in front of the zombie dragon but behind the forest, actually. Yeah, a little bit hard to spot, so they blend in with the forest, making mm-hmm. them even scarier. Yeah. Um, then you've got the um, four bats in front of another unit of skeletons, so scoring. Three scoring skeletons over on this side, each lined up with the objectives, which is really cool. Keeping me guessing. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe it's keeping you guessing. I shouldn't have told you I didn't choose the left one, should I? Yeah, you know, you've narrowed one down. Guessing, I know, maybe I was bluffing. Um, then you got the Spectral Hunters, 10 of them. Uh, then you got the Zombie Dragon, not Zombie Dragon, Terror Geist. Um, then you've got uh, the Dark Coach, uh, uh, more Swarms, Bat Swarms, I think, uh, and the Barrow Knights on the far side, which obviously my Ferals are thinking, mm, okay, can I get through all of them with the one-up armor save, or is it two-up armor save? Two-up armor save. Um, yeah, Ferals probably not ideal in that Barrow Knights, Ferals situation. 
Cool. Should we see where we go, or do you want to go for a choice of objectives? Yeah. So I, I would say... Oh, you you know, actually, don't you? Because you've seen the pictures. This isn't quite as fun, is it? It is, but it's surprisingly, I wouldn't object. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Okay. yeah. So, but the way he deployed, I can't see him going for the right one. So I would say he's gone for his central one of those three. We we know neither of you are going okay. for that top right top one. That's what. That's yes. A, that's the thing. Well, I don't, but um, I don't know that well, he's we not don't going know, for it. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Set up, yeah. We'll be like, okay. So I reckon yeah, yeah. he's going for his red one that's in the middle. And uh-huh, I would say uh-huh. you're... Oh, see, I don't know. With you. I would say yours one is in front of the big one. Your big unit. Because A Vetronox in the middle. That's what I would go for. And so we'll see if I'm right. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, And uh, make yep. your guess now, Pete. Make your guess and why are you right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. cool. Good stuff. Let's, let's crack on and see what happens. Uh... Can you move forward? I move forward. Yeah, in my first turn, I was super aggressive with this orc um, list. It was the start of day two. I'd had enough of playing around. <laughs> so yeah, I was I was going forward. Those two wrecking teams sort of crisscrossed a bit um, to to get in that formation. Mm-hmm. Um, I really didn't waste want to waste them on skeletons as much as Andy didn't have a lot of magic to bring stuff back. They wouldn't be benefit beneficial yeah. if I just um, did did skeletons with them. I think I must have cast a swarm of insects as well. Um, uh, on someone, I think uh, maybe a wound on the dragon. There's a oh, dice yeah, the dragon, actually. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I think maybe I was chipping away on him, as as fruitless as that would be. I can't even remember. Um, I think Andy must have chosen a rise. He must have done every vampire does. I was going to say um, he's got four yeah. spells. One of them exactly. Is, you uh, need to have a rise. rise. Yeah, he's got it, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And over here, I was a bit more tentative, um, based on the fact that Barry Knights probably go through all those feral orcs. Um, interestingly, we were next to Owen Holborn on on the table next to us, and he said that he didn't like the odds of Baronites against the Ferals. He thought that the Baronites would, um, Not would on die right. to the Ferals, sheer amount of attacks. Um, and so there was a lot of banter going on about that confrontation. I mean, obviously, mm. you've got swarms, a dark coach, a terror geist. And there's so trolls much and all sorts. Help, yeah. There's so many other factors involved that it's not going to be one on one potentially. But, yeah, one on one, I would back the ferals, even though they're only AP one for one turn. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no. but the, the Barrow Knights are it's a lot if, of attacks. It depends who yeah. charges as well. So I guess yeah, yeah. But mm-hmm. in the long run, for sure, because Barrow Knights are only mm-hmm. one attack strength four each. Yeah, good point. Yeah, so. yeah. no, good point. But yeah, there was a lot of banter going on, especially between Owen and, and Andy, because oh, he was like, you know, do you want your Baronites to go into that? And I was like, I don't know either. So yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. yeah it's good fun. But yeah, I was a bit ten- more tentative on this side for obvious reasons. Uh, over here, no tentativeness going on here. Um, Andy declared a double charge, uh, one with Bat Swarms and one with Spectral Hunters. Mm. I, I wasn't too disappointed that he did this, to be honest, because this was actually kind of like getting on with it. Um, yeah. And I quite like the idea. I mean, normally I would throw my ferals in front of my veterans so that the ferals have the first fight of the game. The veterans, let's see what they can do first off. Um, but what was quite important for this one um, was that he was charging into my spears, which obviously gave me a bit of an agility boost, which did mean I would actually be attacking first. Um, He's whereas I think with a... race, isn't he? Yes, he is. But I mean, you know, still. The, the bat swarms can do a, a bit of damage first. I don't know. I just it just felt like a, charging into spears always. I feel mm-hmm. like that's a good thing for me to be fighting in. Yeah, um, yeah. So you know, I quite like that attacking before the horses, if nothing else. <laughs> uh, and sure enough, um, I, I did a, I did kill them at a few of the um, spectral hunters, despite their um, their three up Aegis save because I didn't have any magical attacks or anything like that. Mm. Um, and I also did a fair few wounds to the uh, bat swarms as well um, and ended up, I think a bit of that must have been Crumble, I think. Um, yeah, possibly. Yeah, I think Crumble's included in that picture. Because the three up Aegis, obviously, I don't think I would have got through uh, four of them with well, the three up Aegis. Mm. Yeah, maybe, but yeah. Yeah, so that's I. Th- I felt that was a good start for me, really. Um, yep. And so I, I mean, you can see the rest of Andy's movement as well in this picture more than anything else. He, he very much moved his big beasties up behind the skeletons on the right side, keeping giving me no clues as to which objective he was going for over there. 
Um, but on this other side, the Terror Geist swooped around. Um, I was just glad that the Terror Geist was on a different side of the board to my veteran Orc Marauders, mm. um, who obviously, as much as they have only got a three up armor, that Terror Geist still just screams them to death. Um, so I was quite glad that they were in different places on the board, sort of, at least to start with. Um, and, um, and yeah, it was, um, he also remained quite tentative, just moving his bat swarms onto the objective and saying, come charge me if you think you want to get in trouble over there. And yeah. I did want to get in trouble because I declared a uh, war cry um, in my turn two, um, just to facilitate a few of these charges. Um, so I declared the Iron Orc Chariot double swift stride into the Terror Geist alongside the trolls who gain swift stride um, because of the, the war cry. Um, did they gain swift stride? I can't remember. No, I don't think they. There's some rule about trolls. They don't gain the swift stride. I think because okay. they're not um, orcs. Uh, there's something there. I can't remember the exact wording of it. Um, but it wasn't very far for the trolls to go anyway. So that charge was fairly good. Well, a long charge that that was on the cast. There was this feral orc charge, and it was mm. very much part of the whole banter that we were having about. You know, is that one on one fight going to go one way or the other? And I figure, like you identified last turn. If I charge them, they don't get their lances. So this is a long charge. It's but like this a might whole round of combat you're taking it off of them. Exactly, exactly. Um, so I figured, yeah, go for it. Mm. And the other charge was something that I sort of like did a little bit of a, a trying to think ahead move, which was to charge into the flank of the bat swarms. Uh, my veteran orcs probably could have handled that long term against those two units fighting them. They're probably going to win on the grind. Um, but what I was looking at was a potential long overrun into the flank of the Terror Geist um, with my uh, veteran orc marauders. Because out of in interest, combat... mm -hmm. could you not have just charged the hex race anyway? Oh, as in, yeah, not bothered with the bat swarms. Mm. That's a good point, actually. Yeah, no, I'd thought that. That would have made it a lot shorter of an overrun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, goodness. I mean, to I be fair, that's that. what. Um, <laughs> That's what Luke did actually with his uh, Minotaurs, wasn't it? He bypassed mm. one unit to charge the flank of another. Yeah, didn't see that at all at the time or other way or even now. You know, when talking about this battle report, I could have just charged directly into the hex race, like move forward, gone. Yeah, no, that's a good point actually. But no, I decided to go through the bat swans first, <laughs> it kind of which would be like less attacks. So in the moment, you can, like because people are dead in the back rank, there might be that. Yeah, yeah. you don't always see mm. the boundaries and stuff, and like with the bat swarms in yeah. front of you. Mm. Yeah, no, true. I didn't say it. Absolutely. Um, these two guys, I think one of them might hit the left skeleton. Yeah, the one on the left hits. Yeah, and the one on the right. The one on comes the right. Up short. Yeah, and Which basically the no, the one on the left rolled really, really far, so he wasn't supposed to hit. Oh right, okay. and just rolled a really high number and kills three skeletons. So much like the fact that it wasn't something I thought was worthwhile. I only killed three skeletons as well. Yeah. That's a really low amount for three d six strength six hits. Would, um, be two, considering... would it be two d six? This because you went. Into oh, it, it would be two d six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Correct. But still, you know, even on average of seven, <laughs> that's yeah. that's still pretty poor. Uh, but it, he was wasted the minute he hit skeletons anyway, so it was all good. Um, and yeah, so few. Um, there's a reason why the overrun turns out okay. And yeah, we might have been having a different conversation entirely if you'd have said, couldn't they have hit the hex race and then I didn't overrun? Because <laughs> I would have been very upset if I'd have realized yeah. I missed that trick. Um, but the reason I, I got the overrun, which was, I think, 11 inches, uh, was because I actually managed to get Guile and Fury, uh, the orc hereditary spell, no, on the veteran orc marauders. So yeah. they were... Uh, I was going to say, it did look special. long. Like, like yeah, it really was long. long. It was, yeah. it was. I think it was a, it was at least ten, maybe eleven. Um, but yeah, I got double swift stride, and I got um, the Guile and Fury to add an extra distance to their overrun, um, yeah. which is a really nice thing to have in your hereditary. I think that goes back it's to the Oak nice. thing. Yeah. It's such a good hereditary spell. Like, not only does it do the plus one to hit or minus one to hit, um, Orc or Goblin side of things, but it also does this overrun thing. And combined with the War Cry, they can go a long way. And yeah, their their involvement in the fight with the veteran orcs just meant that it was it was a no brainer to kill the swarms, kill the um, spectral hunters, 
overrun into the terror geist i also managed to get awaken the beast off on the trolls so they're now strength six um so that's not a great position for the terror geist to be in um uh, it was really actually quite close i had to reform my veteran orcs um as as such um and it was close to being no room for the marauders to get into mm. that flank okay. of the terror Ooh, geist. that last guy so I, I one guy hanging out the back so it was actually really close, but we were really like careful over the center of the veteran orcs, or I, I was yeah. careful when I was doing it. Uh, unfortunately, they managed to get in that overrun. Although, actually, I think probably the trolls in the veteran orc chariot, as we can see in this picture, would probably be absolutely fine on their own based on the strength six trolls, and they did indeed finish off the terror guys with yeah. no problems. Um, I overran with the iron orc chariot into the skeletons as well. And overrun with the veteran orc marauders. Um, I took a couple of wounds on my um, characters, uh, on my character and champion. Um, what was that? DTs? DTs? It must have been. Mm. Must have been DTs because um, I don't think the terror guys got a chance to strike back. Put it that way. Um, cool. So yeah, I think yeah, uh, Gromgor didn't like the branches. Uh, but yeah, the trolls didn't take any wounds either. So that was all good. Um, Andy comes back to me. Um, he he was a bit gutted about that flank charge and seeing that flank charge, and probably would have been less gutted if I'd have done it by the hex race. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, the fact that it was an old big overrun. He he responds by charging his zombie dragon into the veteran orcs, and that is an easy decision for me to flee. Really, there was nothing else the zombie dragon to charge, so I was just happy to keep the zombie dragon failing a charge and being not able to move any further. And I was fairly sure that with a um, discipline of eight, the veteran ox would be able to get back in it later on. But they'd already done a good job anyway. Uh, rest of the vampires, he keeps his skeletons behind the wrecking team because he has no interest in moving through it. Although I thought he might just waste a few skeletons and kill the wrecking team. Uh, but there wasn't really that much going on over there. Like The feral orc marauders can't really do it on their own against two ranked up units of skeletons. Um, they just lose over a couple of rounds of combat, mm -hmm. really. I think I saw that in a battle against your skeletons, actually, uh, in the previous game. Um, the feral orcs just eventually die. Um, yeah. So there wasn't a lot going on. The monstrous revenant moves up to threaten the center and the veteran orc marauders on the other side. Um, yeah, and that's turn two. Uh, over here, Iron Ock Chariot starts crunching away. He had a job to do, the Iron Ock Chariot, because I wasn't very happy with him still after round two, and he lost, died to slaves, uh, Infernal Dwarf slaves. Um, so, yeah, I was hoping that he could chew through a few skeletons. I was never under the impression that the Iron Ock Chariot could kill all of these, because it started with 35 skeletons, like, yeah. without impact hits. That's a lot of chewing to do, even with a bit of crumble to help out. Uh, and the skeletons do have halberds, so he actually is wounding me on on fives so you know he can still do damage to me um so i didn't i didn't think the iron oak chariot was going to win that solo but it was just to keep things busy in the center for a while and on the left flank um yeah so i'm just trying to think did so i make that charge? you must i must have made the charge and not taken a picture yeah and then but because he's coming moved a long way forward that's come in with end. everything the the yeah. car steen yeah, it, so it looks like I made the charge and I didn't kill very many Barrow Knights, basically, mm -hmm. in turn one. Um, and probably didn't lose too many Feral Orcs in my turn, the turn I charged. But in this turn, when he's got the Dark Coach and the Bats involved, he has now smooshed me quite royally. It could have even been that you failed charge because of the thing gone really far. Yeah, maybe. It's hard to tell, isn't it? Oh, yeah, maybe yeah. because the Trolls were charged as well so it's hard to tell how far i went um but either way but, yeah the ferals are going to be gone in this yeah, situation it, with with dark coach i don't think it i think it becomes yeah. a yeah and ap0 so. now in the second turn onwards yeah. so so that does mean though that the scoring is um with with my ferals go down the only scoring over there will be the baron knights now the baron knights i will bind out whether andy has chosen that token based on what the baron knights do so I was very much, oh, are you going to come into the middle or are you going to keep that objective, Andy? You know, like this. And uh, we were, yeah. he was like, oh, wouldn't you like to know? <laughs> so we, we were playing that game and it was all good fun. Um, into my turn three movement, uh, the Veteran Orcs rally. Awesome. Good lads. Um, the Goblin Chariots have made their way around because they don't need to go down with the Ferals. 
um, on the right, on the left flank. Um, the trolls move forward aggressively and say to the monstrous revenant, "Come and get some if you want some, son." Um, mm -hmm. And we'll see if he does want that. Um, I didn't really know how it would pan out. Uh, meanwhile, my veteran alt marauders do a massive like wheel to turn around. <laughs> Um, hard wheeling around the forest um, mm. and uh, getting back into the game. I bring on the neophytes on the back of the board as well because there isn't really anywhere that they can get to an objective if there's an objective that I've chosen near the board edge. <laughs> Maybe me putting the neophytes there tells you which objective I'm not going for. Um, but yeah. Uh, and the, the feral orc marauders on the hill just stay there because um, they can't take on skeletons. My, my wrecking team has moved into the middle. Mm -hmm. Again, tempting anything to do stuff. Uh, yeah, more feral orcs die, as expected. It's only going one way now over there. You're definitely not doing as many as I thought you would. Perhaps, are you, you're, you're going <laughs> second, though, right? Is the uh, yeah, he's, he's agility three, I'm two. Mm. Um, so yeah, this turn I wouldn't have done any. The last turn, probably maybe I whiffed with AP1 if he charged me. Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah. It looks like he killed uh, you, me, ran you down as well. Killed me, ran me down. Yeah, and that <laughs> was probably been the bouncer about. Is he going to stay there or not? Um, in other news, the skeletons have reformed to face the Inoc chariot, and that. And I think he's got a spell up. I think he might have. I can't remember what spell it is. But wheel turns. Put one of his... Oh, I might have put wheel turns on the skeleton on on the chariot. Yes, so that the skeletons couldn't wound. No, it would have been hit. No, what would it have been? I don't know. Right. Yeah, I'm not sure wheel turns helps. You might put it on. Oh, it... I know what I did. I, I didn't do it for the skeletons. <laughs> <clears throat> I did it. He was already hitting on fours anyway with the skeletons. So I did it on the chariot so that if the monstrous revenant wanted to come in next turn, it would be hitting the chariot on a four. Yeah. Um, so that was what I was doing. Yes, makes sense now that I've thought about it. Uh, because I was actually thinking I could quite like to fight the monstrous revenant with my trolls because uh, mm. the trolls just don't die to it. Um, yeah. And and I put Awaken the Beast on the trolls, I think, resilience-wise. Yeah. Which I possibly shouldn't have done if I wanted yeah. that combat because it definitely puts people off. Um, but yeah, whatever, Trevor. Um, he, oh yeah, he he cast. Um, I think he's got a cultism. He did the breath weapon. I think. Okay, uh, this isn't his. Oh yeah, because he's got a breath weapon as well, isn't he? Oh, it don't. might be the breath weapon. Yeah, yeah, true. Yeah, it might <clears> be the breath <throat> weapon. Um. Yes, I'm forget. I'm getting my battles confused. Uh, kills a couple of Vetronok Marauders, which is fine. Over here, Ironok Chariot goes down despite wheel turns, but I, di I didn't think wheel turns would really keep him alive. Mm. But I was just hopeful in case it did, because it would have been nice if um, if I could have held it in place and then charged in the flank with the trolls. Um, that would have been even nicer. But unfortunately, the Ironok Chariot goes down, which is to be expected just from the, the skeletons. To be honest, they are strength. String four. Um, so with enough attacks, he could have killed it. Um, but there is a bit of an overrun potential for his monstrous revenant into the very last man of my veteran marauders. Ooh. Fortunately, fortunately, he doesn't roll far enough. Um, mm. I think he needed like an 11 or 12 with the monstrous revenant to get into that back corner uh, of my veterans. So I was very scared about that. Because if he gets into the flank of the veteran marauders, then my marauders are stuck there. And probably the that dragon, would have meant yeah. that. Yeah, probably Gromgor would have had to take one for the team and done a challenge and seen who could survive. Mm. And I don't think Gromgor survives against a vampire count with a monstrous revenant underneath him. But I don't know. Yes, fifth um, position go. Yeah, uh, my turn became free though for the veteran marauders, and I charged into the flank of the skeletons to get past his big beasties. The zombie dragon is actually facing them, um, but I'm hoping to blow through really and um, and not have to take on the zombie dragon or at least. And cause you do. Andy some decisions. And yes, I do go through the uh, skeletons, um, but I don't overrun very far, mm. um, which is really, really weird. At least I don't think so. Maybe the next picture shows I overrun. I can't remember. Um, but yes, um, go through the skeletons, no problem. I do overrun, but I don't overrun very far. Um, Looks like the yeah, Baron Knights came into the rear. The Baron Knights came into the rear... Of the... No, 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 they didn't. Um, no, they must have done. 
Yeah, because I would have needed a turn to turn around. No, I think I turned around in my turn. Yeah, when the Veteranauts charged the flank of the skeletons, that I turned around. Okay. Uh, you can't can't quite see them. Yeah, I turned around in my turn, the turn that the Veteranaut Marauders charged the skeletons. Sure. And then Andy came in the front um, with his Baronites, which, to, which told me that he wasn't going for that objective. Yeah. Um, and I was also quite interested to see how that combat worked out. Um, Andy didn't have a flaming banner on them, so I was quite intrigued by that. Um, what's going on here? Oh, there's a bit of a story. Can you go back to the previous picture? Right, so I, I killed the skeletons and overran. That did get me out of the line of sight of the monstrous revenant, okay? It did not get me out of the line of sight of the zombie dragon. He could have mm -hmm. charged into the flank of my veteran marauders. However, <laughs> we looked at it, and there's no way that the zombie dragon can charge the veteran marauders in the flank without maximizing and hitting the wrecking team. Sure. <laughs> because technically the wrecking team is something that you can collide with whereas if that was another unit it would have involved shutting the door yeah, or not maximising yeah. but because the wrecking team is something that you hit and blow up, he still has to maximise into my flank mm. and 2d6 3d6 strength 6 hits on the zombie dragon prior to having a challenge with Gromgor is not quite as favourable <laughs> No. <laughs> um, so Andy decides not to charge into my flank so I got a bit lucky with that placement of the wrecking team in my overrun if I'm honest because the wrecking team couldn't have ended up in a better spot <laughs> for yeah. that and, and, and that was another indication of yeah this one's going pretty well for me <laughs> um, and yeah we, we carry on nonetheless and you can see that the zombie dragon has had to move on to the other side of pretty much where he started the battlefield actually yeah. Um uh, done a big circle, and the monstrous revenant similarly has moved around the back of it. Um, and I think that's another breath weapon or spell going off to kill a couple sure. more veteran marauders. But all is well. Um, this is just prior to the troll combat with the baronites, I think, but it just shows you a picture of everything else going on. Um, I don't think we're at the point yet where I'm revealing objectives or anything. But yeah, the baronites... They're no more. They don't even touch the trolls. That's just what trolls do. It's 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 a bit insulting to Baron Knights, really, isn't it? Um, because, yeah, it was just pretty horrible. Um, and also, it means the trolls are free for me to charge in my turn to the Dark Coach that has tried to back up the Baron Knights. Uh, so that flank, unfortunately, Brandy has mm, met trolls. Collapsed. Really? Yeah. yeah it has collapsed it. in the face of trolls. That's what a lot of people find against trolls. Um, elsewise, I think we were fairly short on time. I don't know when the last picture is going to hit. Um, but we were like four or five turns in, I think. And we basically... I think what we did was we actually revealed a bit too early in terms of the objectives. We revealed objectives at the start of turn five rather than at the end of turn five. But that I think was mo that was partly us not reading the rules properly, and partly um, and partly just us getting excited with the time we had because we were having yeah. a good fun battle, which is sure. often the case. Um, so we um, you could see my dice there. I was rolling pretty hot too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, look at all those fours and fives, and yeah, you got, it, you got it ready for a, of, ready for a pitch yeah. clearly. Yeah, well, whatever those dice were for, it might have been the trolls versus the dark coach. But yeah, yeah, the way it falls, the way it ends up is I do kill off the Dark Coach when I charge it. The trolls get more points to their tally. Um, and basically, we establish that... Um, yeah, you go. There's a couple of last pictures to talk through. I got so many spells off to help the trolls as well. It wasn't even close, really. Yeah. Um, I, d I don't know when the last picture's going to hit, but um, effective... There you go. Effectively, I decided that I would go and stand in front of the Monstrous Revenant with my Veteran Orc Marauders and... It, it was either Andy decided he didn't want to get into combat with them, or we decided let's just stick with what we've got and see where the points end up because we were sure. running on time. I don't really know how it would have worked out, Monstrous Revenant versus Gromgor and the Veteran Orc Marauders. And I, I, I don't think we really worked out whether or not I could have got away from him with like, maneuvering and all sorts. 
but Andy said that you know this one's fine. We'll see how it goes um, and and call it there. Mm. And that's what we did. Um, so objective wise, um, we both went for the same one, the which one. was the gold one. Oh, okay. <laughs> And my Vetronauts were claiming both. Uh, I think my Vetronaut Marauders, who probably were important if they had have got into a combat with the Monstrous Revenant, um, they were not claiming the objective, but the Vetronauts were. And, yeah, uh, so that's so really interesting. The objective as like well. There was only one spoil. That's, not, that's mm. cool. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if he'd have gone with the Skeletons and the other gold one, he would have absolutely won that. Mm. Um, yeah, sure. But, um, but yeah. And so we count up there. And yeah, fortunately for me, I mean, Maybe it would have changed if we'd have rolled out the combat with the Monstrous Revenant and the Veteran Marauders. I don't really know. Um, probably, I think that probably would have gone Andy's way, thinking about it, now that I've done a bit of number crunching and thought on it. But yeah, I get the objective win, 17-3 to me. Delighted with that one. A lot yeah. went well for me. A lot went well. And um, that more than doubled your score? The, <laughs> it did, yeah. Time? Yeah, 14 plus 17 puts me up to 31. Um Clawing 50's in way, sight. It is in sight. Yeah, yeah, 50's yeah. 50's exactly. in sight. Yeah. yeah, that's all I needed to be was 30 or more at the end of round four. 31 means I'm just about there. So, yeah, great game, Andy, as always. Really enjoyed it. Um, thank you for that. Um, you, the fluff in your list is brilliant. The, mm. the painting you do is superb. You know, the positivity, it's such good fun. Sorry that I've, uh, I've had another good battle against you there. It, it, everything did go well for me. Um, yeah, look, yeah. some nice overruns, etc. Mm. And yeah, say, yeah. one at least one good batch of dice. Yes, <clears throat> yeah. Spells, spells worked out for me at the right time. So yeah, cheers yeah. for that. And we're going to round five and see if I can claw my way to fifty. Yeah. That's, well, but you're up first. Yep. Uh, but before then, um, before you see the last round of Out of War, uh, the best UK tournament of. Uh, of, of the year um, go check out our Twitter Facebook Patreon and forum shenanigans uh, as well as like share subscribing uh, to the channel it does help uh, when you uh, do all that and comment of course which is something that we don't need to remind you to because you do great at that already yeah um, yep. so so yeah uh, that's all for housekeeping I think we'll wait we roll on round five see you later